powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Janelle Slade. And I'm Jay Cohn. A bill that would extend Agent Orange benefits to thousands of ailing Navy veterans hits a last second snag in the U.S. Senate. The so-called Blue Water Navy bill fails to pass the Senate when an unnamed senator puts a hold on the legislation. Now, the bill would make tens of thousands ailing veterans eligible for disability compensation and health care from the VA. Now, those veterans served on ships that patrolled territorial waters off the Vietnam coast during the war and were exposed to Agent Orange and other herbicides that were sprayed to poison enemy ground forces. But an unknown senator has put a hold on that bill, meaning its fate is in jeopardy as the Senate looks to adjourn the current session by week's end. Senator Tester, along with Montana Senator Steve Daines, are vowing to keep up the fight for the Blue Water Bill. They plan to hold a news conference tomorrow in an effort to draw more national attention to the issue. Montana Senator Tester is the ranking Democrat on the Senate Veterans Affairs Committee. These are the folks that came back from war and there was nobody at the airport waiting for them. Nobody. And now we're going to deny them the benefit that they have earned because they were exposed to Agent Orange. And there is no doubt they were exposed to Agent Orange. Our veterans deserve much better. It is unacceptable that a technicality in the law and a dysfunctional federal bureaucracy has resulted in the prolonged suffering of thousands of our nation's heroes. Now, the U.S. House passed nearly identical legislation earlier this fall, but in the Senate, an individual lawmaker can put a hold on most any bill. Senator Tester and VA Committee Chair Ronnie Isaacson promised to keep working on a possible compromise to see if they can save the bill before the current lame duck session of Congress adjourns at the end of the week. Well, President Donald Trump defends himself against allegations that he violated campaign finance laws. Court filings say payments to two of the president's alleged mistresses were done to influence the 2016 presidential election. But the president says those payments were a private transaction done by a lawyer. The president's former personal attorney, Michael Cohen, admitted he was the liaison for those payments. And he revealed he had contact with Russian officials during the presidential campaign to talk about building a Trump Tower in Moscow. Closer to home, an overflow crowd showed up for a public meeting today with the Yellowstone County Zoning Commission as it was to consider a zone change to accommodate a gravel pit project in West Billings. Q2 Zoe Zandoro went to the meeting to hear what the public's thoughts are about this proposed project. Zoe. Thanks, Jay and Janelle. Well, first, Mark's Materials, the company overseeing the project, actually ended up canceling today's public meeting and pushed it out to about a month from now. And although it was canceled, people stayed, especially neighbors that live in the area where the project will be, because they wanted answers. And things got a little heated. I spoke with Ed Walker, the business developer of First Mark Construction, and was also able to speak with someone who lives and works in the area. We want to be as transparent, as open as we possibly can as, uh, for this project to go forward. Um, so we want to, talk, want to hear from the neighbors, we want to hear what they have to say. I'm so hopeful that the DEQ will understand that this is not this is not meant for our neighborhood. It's not meant for the semis on Duck Creek Road, which is already deteriorating from flooding. It's not meant for Canyon Creek Elementary, which sees semi-truck traffic already. Now, the neighborhood meeting will be held this Thursday at Oscars Park beginning at 6 p.m. And that will give those with questions and concerns a chance to meet with First Mark Construction and the owner of the property. Janelle? All right. Thanks so much, Zoe. A Montana health insurance company joins in on a major move to help educate, diagnose, and treat mental health issues across the state. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Montana will donate a quarter of a million dollars to help support Billings Clinic's new psychiatric residency program, the first of its kind in the state. Montana is a rough and tumble state, but you can't pull your bootstraps up and tough it out with mental illness. It doesn't work that way. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Montana has made fighting mental illness, one of our top priorities for this company. The $250,000 donation will help fund the residency program designed to train and attract psychiatrists to Montana to address the growing mental health crisis. Residents attend the University of Washington for the first two years after medical school and then spend years three and four here in Montana. It's all part of the effort to combat the staggering number of suicides in the state. Montana was one of three states in the country that have no 
uh, psychiatry residency program. The other two states are Wyoming and Alaska. These three states are also among the three, the top three, when it comes to suicide rates nationally. This will not be Billings Clinic alone. It's going to be a statewide effort with these residents rotating through our critical access hospitals, in our reservations, in our correctional facilities, and working with our veterans. Now, Dr. Julie Kelso says since the residency program was announced, the clinic has received more than 400 applications for the first three positions available starting next summer. The man killed in a one-vehicle crash Friday night at the intersection of Apache Drive and Highway 3 has now been identified. 25-year-old Travis Muma of Yellowstone County died when his pickup truck rolled multiple times. Yellowstone County Coroner Cliff Mahoney says Muma died of blunt force injuries. Alcohol is suspected in the crash. Muma was not wearing a seatbelt. Well, turning to weather, things are mild here, but elsewhere in Montana, storms are a brewing, Bob. Yeah, that threat board's starting to really fill up, so I thought I'd share it with you. Here's what's happening out there. Look close to home. We do have, as you see here, a high wind watch for the Beartooth foothills and also the Cody foothills. Winds there starting tomorrow could be gusting 65 to 75 miles per hour. Also a little next door, you can see that's a winter weather advisory in Gallatin and Madison County, looking for three to six inches of snow in those areas. A little farther to the north, it's a major storm brewing out there. Yeah, that's a blizzard warning up there in the front range of the Rockies could see two to six inches of snow in the valleys up to eight inches in the mountains and yes we're looking at 45 mile per hour winds we also have a winter storm warning and a winter weather advisory snowfall amounts ranging anywhere from like two to six to all the way up to 14 inches of snow up in those areas so the next couple of days are going to be very interesting in the west we're going to catch just a little bit of it here in Billings we'll talk about more in a few more minutes all right thanks so much Bob so imagine getting a phone call asking you to build a luxury home high above whitefish really not unusual especially if you're a builder in northwest Montana. But then you find out your work is going to be the showcase of a national television promotion. As Dennis Bragg finds out, it was a chance to turn a challenge into the perfect opportunity. You could say every house has a story. That's certainly the case for this luxury home on the slopes of Big Mountain, although its origin started as a mystery for Bear Baranowski and his colleagues. At the second or third meeting, they kind of revealed, okay, this is HGTV's dream home for 2019, and you, you can't tell anybody about this, but we've got some, we've got a, you know, a budget we've got them hit. We've got a schedule we've got to hit, and we've got quality that we've got to hit. The expertise that we found in Timber Forge design and Momquist construction, um, you know, we just couldn't ship that in, if you will. They know the local area. They know all about um, what it takes to build in this terrain. Um, they're just really the pros. The challenge started in February during one of the snowiest winters in years on Big Mountain. But before long, the bold design with dream ideas was taking shape taller window wall than we've ever done, uh, one single slope roof over the top, and it transitioned into a space that not only allows a lot of glass to be done and a lot of light to come in, but also looks unique from both the inside perspective and outside perspective. It was different that you, we had two live cameras on the exterior, we had three live cameras on the interior, and then we had a cameraman who was kind of in your grill here, and he moved to Whitefish, and he was here every day filming while we were, and he kind of became part of the building crew. But it's not just the interior of the home that's beautiful. Out here on the deck, you get a full chance to enjoy the view of Whitefish Lake and the Montana outdoors. Everybody just wants indoor-outdoor space, especially in Montana. That's that's kind of the key. That, that Everybody lives outside. And the beauty about this house is with the door system that we have, the inside and outside are so interactive that if you had 100 people in here, it wouldn't feel full. Nice little interaction between the outside and inside, uh, along with the living room uh, window wall that is an accordion style wall that goes all the way back so you've got a 16 foot wide opening by 10 feet tall really capturing that inside outside feel so it's really a functional space. Functional right down to the classic cedar hot tub. When you walk in it just kind of takes your breath away and immediately when you're inside you feel like you're outside again and you've got you know Whitefish Lake in the background all the woods, the forest, and you feel like you're just perched on top of the world up here. The idea behind the design of this home was to tie together the feel of Big Mountain in western Montana with the rest of the Pacific Northwest. It's kind of a mashup of like new western and also Pacific Northwest because we're so close to Washington, which is known for its Pacific Northwest style, but we're also in Montana, and I love both styles equally. So I thought by blending the two, we kind of appeal to a wider audience and create something new and fresh. 
And that's what impresses. Luxury touches, yes, but a home-style feel. From recycled wood from an historic building in Columbia Falls, the handrail formed of ski lift cable, to the pet nook under the stairs to welcome fuzzy friends. Throw in a new Honda and a quarter million dollars in cash, and you really do have big dreams on Big Mountain. It turned into another house, but it was a, a special house for us. But we were really proud of it, uh, how we pulled it off and how it happened for sure. On special assignment, Dennis Bragg, MTN News. Wow. Staged pretty nice too, mm -hmm. huh? By the way, here's the uh, important stuff. Entries for the HGTV Dream Home Sweepstakes starts uh, December 28th. You can enter twice a day until the house is awarded after February 18th. Fun. Coming up on tonight's 10 o'clock news, we're going to party like it's 1989. Check out a look at Montana's Centennial Ball. Plus, the Montana Rescue Mission has a new boss. In a moment, we'll hear from him. And later in sports, halfway point at the NFR, the Montana Cowboys looking good through four rounds. Would their luck continue tonight? Highlights in sports. You're watching MTN News with Jay Cohn and Janelle Slade. Storm tracker weather with Bob McGuire and sports with Scott Green. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader.